Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Aura Weavers. This month our theme is love and mercy. We will be discussing about the issues relating to marriage. And today we have an esteemed guest, Mrs. Amatul Razak Sahiba. She is the secretary of Jamaat-e Islami Hind Women's Wing Karnataka and member of All India Muslim Personal Law Board as well as member of Council of Representatives Jamaat-e Islami Hind. I welcome you ma'am. So let's begin. First I would like to ask your opinion. What is the role of elders in the family and community to help people get married and have a good bond between them? Yeah, the elders you know they have a great role to play in the marriages of youngsters and thereafter guiding them to lead a happy married life. As you know, if you just have a look at uh, our society, the picture which comes before us is late marriages of boys and girls. When you ask the boys why they want to, why they are delaying their marriage, the reason they give is they still want to settle down. You know, please give us time, they say. And we, when we ask their parents, even they say that our son wants some time. And actually, the parents, you know, sometimes, they themselves delay the marriage of their sons because they think that once their son is married, they cannot have their dreams fulfilled. They love them a lot of things. They are spent on him. And they think that if the girl whom he is married, and if he listens to her and he goes the way she wants, then we cannot do anything. And the second reason is uh, they want to have a big Valima party and all such uh, extra residences which are uh, there in our society. And the story of uh, girls not getting married or delaying their marriage is a different thing. You know, the girls, sometimes they say, I have counseled some of the girls. Now, the reason which they gave me why they don't want to get married is, they have seen their parents' bitter relationship. They have experienced their parents' bitter relationship. And the way their parents have lived in the house without any peace of mind, this has made them decide that the same thing should not be repeated with them. And they think it's better we stay alone, it's better we delay as much as possible. And the uh, second reason is uh, the wrong concept of empowerment. The girl and the parents, they think empowerment is if she starts earning something. They think that if she gets a job, she will get uh, respect in her in house. She can have a strong hold in the in house. So they go on delaying the marriage until she gets a good job. And thirdly, it's our society itself which is responsible for the late marriages of the girls. The wrong things which have crept in a society regarding the marriage. A big uh, nikah party and uh, uh, they saying what to say, the dowry and all, you know. The parents they will have to wait unless, until they will have to wait until they arrange for the dowry and the big uh, nikah party and all. And uh, one more reason is the girl and the parents are very choosy. They go on rejecting the proposals one after the other. They think that the boy is not up to their mom. And this goes on. And the girl reaches an age when she is not able to get a good purpose. So you can understand what role the elders can play. First of all, an awareness has to be brought in the society. What, uh, what is the purpose of nikah? What is the purpose of relation? Uh, this uh, thing, marriage. You know, every human being has a physical and a natural urge. So, to fulfill this urge, it's better that the boy and the girl enter into a legal relationship. If this is not done, you know, they'll go the wrong way. And this should, we should bring an awareness among the people that having a 
big party for the nikah or giving a huge sum of uh, dowry etc etc is not the thing which will make the boy and the girl happy it's not the thing that will uh, make them lead a happy married life should bring an awareness among them that what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa ankihul ayam aminko get those get married those who are single in the society single in the sense those who are not married and those who are divorced etc so it's an advice to the elders that wa ankihul ayam aminko get the ones who are get the ones who are single in the society married and you know the purpose of nikah is to legalize the relationship between the boy and the girl it is also to continue the human race it's one of the important reasons for nikah so whatever is obligatory in the nikah that should be made aware in the public only two things are obligatory in the nikah that is ijab or qubul one proposes the other accepts and secondly presence of uh, two witnesses this is obligatory in the nikah not a grand nikah party or all those um, wrong things which are which we are practicing and spending the money lavishly and wajib is mahar it's wajib for the boy to give the mahar and what is sunnah sunnah is padvainika distribution of uh, dates and walima so only if we observe these things it's enough but what is happening in your society it's the duty of each and every person in the society to make the people aware of these things whatever is happening in the society is wrong what is wrong and what is right what is obligatory and what is uh, not the light way allah subhanahu wa taala this should be made aware so i think the elders have a great role they can play an important role in convincing the children to get married as early as possible to keep themselves away from all sorts of evil things and one more important thing is a survey shows that millennials millennials that is uh, those who are born in the 90s a survey shows that these are avoiding to get married late marriage is found late marriages are found in these millennials so you know it's the duty of the parents and the elders in the society to convince the youngsters that how they can live their life will change after marriage how they can be happy and even after the marriage they can be counseled wherever they are going wrong they can be shown the right path this is it. okay uh, what about the challenges if young couples living with in laws is it advisable to do so and what should be the ground rules see there are many challenges which the young couples have to face mm-hmm. one of them is if the girl comes from an entirely different environment she is brought up in a different environment and suddenly when she steps into a new house and the in-laws they expect her to be an ideal wife ideal uh, daughter in law then the girl will have to face its face challenges and you know if privacy they need time to understand each other they want to go out for uh, outings they want to go out they need some time to understand each other so it becomes a challenge when the in-laws don't want to give them privacy when the in-laws don't allow them to go out and if there is joint family it also will be a great uh, it will be a challenge for the girl especially see these challenges so not that they cannot be overcome no these challenges can be overcome by compromising with each other sacrificing for each other and adjusting with each other and the girl and the boy before the marriage 
this should be constant. The girl should be mentally prepared what the environment where she is going to be is, what type of uh, people are there in the in the house. All these things should be made clear to the girl and should be she should be mentally prepared for it. And sometimes when the sister-in-laws are there along with them, that also will be a challenge for her. And uh, you know, the mother, the in-laws, they will have a fear in their mind that every, whenever their son tries to come closer to her, to his wife, the in-laws, they think he is moving away from us. And um, if he tries to give time to his parents, the girl thinks, what was the need to marry me when you want to stay with your parents? You are not giving any attention to me. So, if the boy understands his responsibility and discharges his responsibility towards his parents as well as the wife, the challenges can be overcome. You are asking about joint family, isn't it? Whether they can, whether it is advisable that they stay with them. See, it depends on the situation. Supposing the parents are old and he's the only son. Mm -hmm. So will you advise the son to leave the parents and go out? But if the son has the capacity to discharge his responsibilities both towards his parents and his wife, then he can manage keeping them separate. Giving time to the parents, just giving of money to the parents is not enough. Giving time to them, looking after their happiness, looking after their medical needs if any, making them feel that if he is staying with his wife separately, he has not gone away from them. The in-laws, they should also think that if our son is giving our rights, then he can look off, uh, when he is able to look after us, when he is discharging our duty, our rights, he is giving our rights, he is discharging his duties, then the in law shouldn't object. When he is struggling, and the boy is struggling to keep both parents happy as well as the wife happy. So, neither the in law should come in his way, nor the wife. As long as the boy is discharging his responsibilities, it's advisable that if he can manage both of them, he can have a growing parents in the ground floor and wife in the first floor or side by side they can have or whichever is comfortable for him. So it's not as advisable that always stick to the to one rule that I'll not separate my parents, I'll not separate my wife. So it depends on the situation. So the boy, boy should be strong enough to deal both with the parents and the wife to keep both of them happy. As long as, long as uh, both of them are happy, no problem. Yes ma'am, I, I agree with you. Often we know that elders intervention into marriages and child upbringing, comments, criticism or even sarcasm can be very determined to the mental and emotional well-being of both spouses. But more specifically, the wife. What should a positive environment to help and advice look like? And what should be avoided? So, a very good question. Endors intervention in the marriage, if you mean the, well, the selection of spouses, mm -hmm. the, if the endors intervention, whether it matters, yes. The elders should keep in mind the likes and dislikes of boy and girl while selecting their spouses. If they forcibly made the, make the boy agree with the girl whom the parents like and he is not having any like for that girl, it, it creates lots of problems. And same is the case with the girl. If 
the girl is forced to marry a boy whom she doesn't like it takes a long 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 time to adjust with that boy and many times what happens is if the boy is forced to marry uh, if the boy marries the girl of his like and the parents don't like they try to find faults with her and always she will be put to criticism and whatever she do the in laws they don't like they treat it wise they find faults with her so this will affect the health of the girl what you asked is My uh, Uh, yeah, she many a times they go into depression. Mm-hmm. However, she tries to keep the in-laws happy, since they didn't want her, their son to marry this girl. They try to find faults and com- always complaining to the son. So, uh, so and um, in the upbr- upbringing of the children, you know, there also, what happens is, if the grandparents. they try to bring the grandchildren close to them this is not like with the daughter in law she thinks and complains to her husband that uh, your parents are spoiling my children i want them to do the homework i want them to study for the test but your parents they distract the children i don't like that and vice versa also if the the uh, grandparents you know if the if the girl is very modern and she is deviating from uh, islamic uh, way so they are worried about the grandchildren and they want to bring them in in a, a, a to bring they want them to they want the grandchildren to be brought up in an islamic way but here also the wife you know the the daughter in law she doesn't like she will complain to the husband and sometimes so what is advised uh, in such cases is uh, the grandparents you know they should not interfere lot into the matters of child upbringing if they notice anything wrong they can explain to them with love they can explain this to the son and the daughter in law with love that where you in which way you are taking your children since they are they are experienced we can tell them what is wrong and what is right how to bring up the children sometimes you know the grandparents they'll be somewhat uh, they not be right they'll watch tv and if the grandchildren come and watch the tv you know and if the daughter in law objects to it they say even we have brought up children you are not the only one who are bringing up the children so really these things you know they matter a lot for the especially the wife you know she is subjected to lot of first stress they want to bring up the children in their own way and the grandparents they want to bring up the children in their own way so this can be settled only by sitting and talking having uh, this thing the uh, conversation in the family to have a Mm, what to say in the environment where the one who is wrong is ready to accept their fault so as uh, they so you say no nasal se sud pyara hai they say so grandparents really they love the grandchildren they think for their better uh, one but sometimes it so happens is they are watching the tv or uh, um, interfering in the um what to say feeding habits of the children if they if the mother she want she wants to feed them with a balanced diet and the grandparents say even we have brought up your our children give them whatever he likes give the child what he likes you know it creates some sort of problem yes very well said ma'am uh, let's come to the problems column what are the major problems that you have observed cropping up by young couples these days what are the reasons behind them see the major problems uh, which crop up between the couples these days is when there are financial crises uh, 
especially after this covid you know many cases came to our forward trust counseling centers wherein the wives complained of their husbands not uh, giving maintenance etc so actually when financial crisis comes in the house the they forget the love which they had for each other money matters a lot to yeah. them mm-hmm. another thing is when the boy is um, abroad and he doesn't take the family there and he leaves the family with the in-laws with his parents the girl wants either to go to her husband's place or to or, or she says let the or she asks him to come back but both are not possible for the boy neither he can come back because he is not having any job here nor he can call the family there since he is not able to maintain the family so this uh, this is one of the problems which we are seeing seeing and um, you know the girls if they the if they see their friends and their neighbors and their relatives living lavishly they start complaining to their husbands why can't you on like the like my friend's husband why can't you that is uh, expecting more than what the husband can give leads to lots of problems so nerd is uh, this kola is uh, happening a lot girls are taking kola that is in islam as you know the boy can divorce and the girl if she doesn't want to leave she can take kola okay. and uh, nowadays it has become very common for silly reasons simple reasons which could have been uh, solved they make them as the major problems and one of the counseling case which had come to me you know the girl just wanted to send her mother in law from her house to her in laws house her brother in laws house when he asked her why do you want to, why don't you want to stay with her she said no i just do not want to leave her with her so this is also one of the reason where can the mother go if she is a single mother if the father in law is not there but nowadays this is becoming a big problem the the girls they don't want to stay with the in-laws and they want to have a life standard of life which their husband cannot afford mm-hmm. so this is one of the problems that the girl is not cooperating with the husband and uh, one more thing is mistrust not having trust on each other the girl starts doubting her husband mm-hmm. uh, so and one more thing is selfishness if the husband is selfish he always wants the wife to care for him he wants always the wife only to do all the chores of the house etc so selfishness mistrust all these things you know or uh, uh, they create lot of problems how should conflict resolution between spouses work should a third party be involved and if so what should be their expertise and intent see initially the boy and the girl that is husband and wife they should sit and try to sort out the problems mm-hmm. as early as they can they should try to sort out the problems if it's not possible for them to sort out the problems by themselves then i think a third party's involvement is necessary third party in the sense not the way which we do that is the girl immediately complains to the mother that such and such a thing is happening in the house i don't want to stay here the mother also immediately says you come off we have not sent you empty handed it still your father is uh, strong enough to look after you you just come off and she doesn't even feel it necessary to inform the husband and 
she leaves the house this is a third party in the sense it can be the boy's parents also the boy going and complaining to the mother for small small things the mother will say send her to her mother's house let her lesson learn learn a lesson we we'll teach her uh, we we'll teach her and her parents lesson so in intervention in the sense elders intervention in the sense not uh, what is happening in our society some who is wise the quran says you know wa basu hakama min ahli wa hakama min ahliha so uh, you, if you have some wise persons in the family they can intervene or nowadays we have got a lot of counseling centers mm-hmm. so the boy and the girl they can themselves approach some counseling centers and counseling centers in the sense uh, isla wherein uh, they guide you properly and uh, according to the islamic way they give you the solutions so that will uh, i think um, solve your problems it's necessary instead of fighting with each other instead of thinking that it's our problem we'll so nowadays these instructors they say it like that also it's our problem we'll solve no i we don't need anyone to come uh, in between us but uh, it uh, ultimately ends in separation so they can approach a wise person in the family if they don't have any wise person in the family they can approach any um, counseling centers so the problems can be solved you got most of the things let's let's conclude finally what tips you would recommend to newly married or those about to get married for marital happy marital home see the best guidance is the guidance from the holy quran so let them remember three letters s c p you are the garments for them and they are the garments for thee so garments in the sense they are the garments for you means they are for your support i said no just remember three letters s c p they are for your support they are for your comfort and they are for your protection mm. so if you just remember this holy verse of the holy quran i think this is the best guidance and one more thing quran says min ayati an qalqalakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddata wa rahma so you are made for, it's one of the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this verse it said it is said that litaskunu ilayha you are made for you enter into the red law not for just uh, worldly enjoyment and thing real this thing or to say litaskunu ilayha means it's a comfort for both each of them wa jala bainakum mawaddatu wa rahma if for some means are followed this uh, mawadda is something more than love so if this mawadda is developed the couple even when they become old they are for each other they are caring for each other they support for each other they they even if there are any um or to say uh, problems these problems they can be easily avoided they can easily be solved if this mawadda is developed between them you know the newly wed should remember just as the stronger the foundation of a building the stronger will be the building so the love in a marriage you know it's respond it will make the it, the it will make the bond between the um, this more bond which is created due to the marriage stronger due to the so one is love trust compromising for each other or sacrificing for each other selfishness should be avoided so if you just remember this uh, i think it's uh, enough for the new lives to lead a happy life till the last also it will be as green as fresh as it was for the first day
it was a wonderful conversation with you ma'am thank you so much that's it for now we got lessons to learn from this conversation today thank you for joining us hope to see you next month till then stay safe assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh